Joining us in studio, Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi. Thanks for being here. Gina, I'd love to be here. Right. Well, you have a new neighbor kind of across the street there yes. at the Capitol, Josh Green. What will be different for you uh, for working with this new governor? Well, you know, I think maybe that question is better asked of him. <laughs> uh, but for me, and let me first of all acknowledge Governor, governor Ige because we had really two good years, although be it very difficult because of COVID, uh, but we had a very good working relationship. The benefit for me is I've known Josh for a long time. And so Governor Green and I have talked about the fact that we've made it public that the people of our island can expect unprecedented collaboration. So that's what I'm looking forward to is be able to get operational in levels that we weren't able to do in the last two years. Again, because of COVID, not because of any reluctance from that administration, but Governor Green has come into office talking about wanting to be bold, wanting to do unprecedented things. We are welcome and ready to receive that. One of the areas that you have to do some bold things in are is the DPP, the right. planning and permitting, which just people want to tear their hair out when they have to apply. How can you f keep fixing that? Well, you know, it's been a long time uh, in the making, and we knew coming into office that the uh, department uh, was a forensic audit done, and, and we knew the difficulties, but we really now understand those problems. And it's taken us a while, a year and a half, quite honestly, to get the money available to make the investments we're making, not just in people, but in technology. We just installed, just this past week, Donna Takeuchi of Puna, have every conference I've worked with Donna for the last couple of years in her role as deputy, but she brings a great pedigree experience to the job and a management style that's been very well received. So we know the problems, we're going at it one by one. We're looking to really deregulate in so many ways because the department had become Overregulated, you know, made frustrations understandable. Now you mentioned deregulate, and I know there's yeah. bills of different formats. One that would uh, just simply exempt from permitting a lot of things for homeowners. How do you feel about that kind of stuff, and what can be done similar for small business? I think, you know, well, small business is the backbone, right? And these are the same people that own the homes as well. And so we kind of look at it. In, in the aggregate. So to the area, and we're working with the professionals and architects and planners that we can deregulate and put it on them. We're going to look to be able to do that, not de deregulate, decertify it, sorry. Um, and we've had a lot of conversations about that. So, you know, anything and everything through technology to having more people to letting go of certain things that before were required to a reorganization and restructure, quite honestly, part of the systemic dysfunction has to do with the way that we've been structured. And, you know, the same person who's trying to get a bathroom remodel is in the same line as somebody who's trying to build a 400-foot condominium. And so we're doing all of that, and we're trying to do it, like I said, as quickly as possible. The good news is, is that there's a lot of possibility here. This is not something we can't fix and nobody knows what to do. We're going to get it done. All right. Now, you, um, last time we had you in here, we were talking about sensitive places legislation. Yeah. It's now in and before the council. Right. Uh, what's your take on where that's heading? Well, I feel like we put together a very good plan. And, you know, yes, we had people show up at the city council and they were in objection to the sensitive places. But the fact of the matter is we've had about 600 people or so apply for licenses. And provided the fact that they're all qualified, most likely if they are, they will get those licenses. We're not... Um, you know, we're going to uphold the Supreme Court ruling. But that group of people still represents a real minority on an island of over a million, 121,000 people. And the fact is, our culture for the last 170 years has not been a gun culture. And so, for me, it's about public safety. The, safe, the sensitive places that we've put in place, we think are not only fair, we think they're appropriate. As I listened to those testimonies, I heard a number of those people describe a Hawaii that I don't know. A Hawaii we don't want to see. And so, you know, for, for that one-off possibility that somebody might be at a park on a Sunday afternoon and somehow they get involved in a shootout and they want to be able to protect their family, quite honestly, I have a hard time believing that that's going to be the everyday occurrence. So, you know, we're going to honor the Supreme Court, but at the same time, the Supreme Court gave us the latitude to determine what kinds of guns we issue and where those guns can be carried. To a much more positive ending yeah. than... Honolulu City Lights. Yes. A beautiful start. A beautiful start. In fact, this weekend we have Kapolei City Lights. We'll be out there in the parade. But honestly, the other day, the other night, and, and quite honestly, since this, the whole Honolulu Holly has been getting decorated compared to just even a year ago when we decided to have Honolulu City Lights. And it's just watching young people and old people, for that matter, all people of all ages, 
enjoy the wonders of Christmas and, and, and trying to bring joy back to our community. I mean, let's face it, the last several years of our lives have been something none of us could have even imagined, but we have gotten through it. Uh, this is a community of great resilience, and this is a great time. It is the season, as they say, to be joyous. We have a lot of challenges in front of us, but let's really enjoy these holidays. All right. Well, thank you, sir.